<laughs> Guys, welcome to the pre-roll for ELL 208, a very holiday-themed episode about Naughty or Nice. Who's Naughty or Nice in 2020? And let me tell you who's very nice. It is Zipix Toothpicks, our sponsor, ZipixToothpicks.com. Guys, I told you about these guys before. They are fantastic. Once again, I had a party in violation of Gavin Newsom's rules and regulations. I had people over for a white elephant party. Had a wonderful time. You know what was the biggest hit of the party? Again, Zipix Toothpicks. Nicotine infused toothpicks give you that hand to mouth feel. They give you that good buzz. They come in all these wonderful different flavors. Now, if you guys are out there vaping, if you had a favorite flavor that's now been banned by the government, check out Zipix toothpicks. So they've got these wonderful flavors like sweet wood and whiskey, clove, even peppermint watermelon. I know it sounds weird, but it's really good. They are FDA registered. They were developed in a lab. And if you're a regular smoker or chewer or whatever else, they really get that quenching of your cravings. You know, it's like it fits that. You got this toothpick in your mouth. You're rolling around. You're still getting that buzz off the nicotine. It's awesome. Check them out. ZipixToothpicks.com. Z-I-P-P-I-X Toothpicks.com. Promo code LION. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land here on the Lions of Liberty podcast, your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. Oh boy, are we live oh, in yeah, the pride no. at least? Are we live in the we, pride? We are now. We're probably live on oh, our hey. Facebook page. Happy, happy belated birthday, Brian. Nope. Thank oh. you. Happy Hands up, don't shoot, Rico. I'm having my hands up the entire, entire group. I'm not banging my mic. Well, we'll see. And I just heard it. I did too. Where is it coming from? It's Odie. It's not me, man. My mic it's is Howie up here. Then. How could it be me? I don't know. It's I'm, I'm not though. moving, and I'm a professional. I hear it just now. I hear it now. It's Odie's mic is not. It's yeah, Odie. Odie, it's your new mic stand. It's it's the it's the it's the springs on your mic stand hitting the cord. Now you know what it is. Yeah, I just I'm, told I'm you. Not, I'm I not do sure. know what it is. It's actually the cord hitting my other keyboard. Yeah, that's go. what it is. Oh, it's the cord on your mic stand. Of course. Ah, uh, the stream master becomes the stream student. Well, ever since I got this stupid <laughs> Mac, everything's all messed up. I can't zoom my camera anymore. Um, Oh, so it wasn't just me. I really yeah. can't zoom. And Brian apparently has an app that he doesn't even know how to recommend what I download. He's like, I don't know. It just says camera Logitech. I, I don't yeah, called, he said the same thing to me and I never found it. It is literally called Camera Settings version 2.5.12, copyright 1996 to 2020 Logitech Inc. Is that That's enough information for you? I don't know. This podcast just feels like like um, very racist without JB. It feels like we're just you know. I think it's a racist. conglomeration of the white power having. It's gonna it's racist. gonna become racist when we have to do the naughty or nice on LeBron James and BLM. Oh. Otherwise, I think we'll be fine. So, so, you know, I've probably mentioned this before. The first ever podcast I did with you guys was a naughty or nice, and that one I. I actually like you. Ha- you sent a list, and I I researched each one and made notes. <laughs> I think this was like year six or seven. I didn't even bother to look at the list. Uh, me neither. <laughs> I it's figured. Perfect. I like, figured it would be that. That would be the case. Well, anyway, good time to welcome people in and tell them this is the naughty nice episode of Electric Liberty Land. And Merry Christmas, everybody! Happy Hanukkah. This you like how over the years I slowly handed off all of my holiday episodes to you. Well, I think that deservedly so because I'm the most creative yeah. and interesting of us. And, and, and I hate holidays. Reason, I'm a Grinch. So it's actually perfect. Oh, I love them. I love it. And I honestly, I'm sad we're not doing what we did last year with the Christmas caroling, which was still fucking hilarious. Oh, no. That was the worst episode of all time. Oh, so funny. So funny. Unironically. We all sung at Christmas carols. It was dynamite. I couldn't believe how bad JB was at singing. And, uh, I'd say a, a rousing. So bad success. that he's not. He hasn't showed up this year. <laughs> he, I think he's boycotted the show. He's boycotted. Hasn't been able to live it down. You know, and I you don't think remember Frenchman, it at all. Don't the French love Christmas? Well, you're probably drunk, Rico. Which is the best way to be. I hope you're all drunk. Are we all drinking here? Yeah, of course. I got a on this naughty or nice, naughty or nice episode, Rico silent. 
I'm drinking a Yingling. Yingling, begrudgingly, because nice. it was still in the <laughs> beer fridge. I ran out of sparkling water, so I can't make my vodka drinks. No, oh, that's to go to the bad. store. But I'll go. To oh, the poor baby. Well, Yingling is the champion's drink, so good job, Howie. What are you drinking? I am drinking Founders All Day IPAs. All right, not bad, Odie. What you got? Drinking Penn Brewery St. Nicholas Bach. It's uh, fantastic. Oh, and- you see that? Look at that bottle. That sounds Look very at that. strong. Look at that. Every winter, every winter ale is always insanely strong. It's delicious, though. It's not an IPA either. So. Wow! Does your liver accept that, or uh, is your mouth just unbelievably happy? Is it thanking you? Did it write you a Christmas card for not shoving that piss water down it? I really don't drink much IPA anymore, but uh, I enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie. I like an oh, IPA. So you've conceded but, in the IPA like- wars. It's I'm like having seen it anything. You, you I don't mean, do it much anymore, but you enjoy it when you do. I just enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy all beer for the most part, except for Bud Light. Anybody drinks that is a <laughs> hillbilly. But. Coastal elitist. Yeah, uh, and Mark, you're drinking what? Your pear cider? Bud Light. Actually, no. Yeah, just Angry Orchard. Yeah, the overly, is out. overly sugary, cidery. Yeah. Don't you get hung over from drinking that sugary shit? Though, no, man? I just don't go to the store. And then I realized, oh, yeah, there's a podcast in five minutes. So I drink what happens to be in the fridge. The 112 right. pack that I bought in August, probably. And you should <laughs> go to Whole Foods, as I've mentioned multiple times. Get their uh, that's cider that's very low sugar. Mm, Whole podcast. Foods. Naughty or nice. There you I'm go. too busy paying taxes and not getting stimulus checks to afford uh, afford Whole Foods. Yeah, but if you got, they got the whole Amazon, Amazon uh, Whole Foods tie in where you get like, Four percent off, so your bill is only twice as much. Five, if you're you like could me. be at a Ralph's. Yeah, I mean that's good. Whole Foods in general. I mean the guy they, Whole Foods got sold to Amazon, obviously, mm-hmm. which made me sad because Whole Foods was run by a libertarian for so long. So still is. Is. Still he is still he's still the still CEO. Run. I thought he sold it off. Does that? He did. It, but he's still the CEO. Yeah, he's still ah, the CEO. Right. He was just on Rogan. It was actually a pretty interesting uh, podcast. They they got into it because he's a he's a vegetarian. The, like the first grocery store that he founded. Is he a Ugh. vegan? Oh, he's yeah, a vegan. He, yeah, he was just on Tom Woods today talking about it. Really? Pushing his veganism? But well, uh, it came up, as it does with <laughs> vegans. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, how could it not? It was funny because they, they kept going back and forth, and Rogue was like, I, I know you're going to cite this study that's bullshit. He's like, no, I'm not. They don't cite the study, like, two sentences later. <laughs> Wait, what was the study about I veganism? Don't know. Just, well, about that how... It was the one around the only way to um, cure, actually cure heart disease, I think is the term they use, is through a all plant-based diet, diet. That's their claim. And apparently that's been proven in a study. <laughs> who did this study? That's what I want to know. Number one, Dr. who did Dr. Anthony um, Fossey. <laughs> yeah. In Wuhan, also, China. I don't, I don't see how heart disease, uh, we're, we're brought up carnivore you know, or, or omnivores. There's no fucking way that eating only plant-based diet will reverse heart disease and get that thing pumping forward better than having some sort of meat in your diet. I refuse to God and believe it. I do too. This is probably why I'll die early. Plus, I also it's delicious, it. so that's pretty important too. Yeah. Well, and also, all these fucking vegans on their plant-based diets, like, have you ever actually looked into the shit that goes into most vegan diets and most vegan foods? It is some of the most, like over chemical over salted over additive it's like it's unless you're eating pure you know you're you're getting it you're cooking it yourself you're minim, you know minimal seasoning and maybe a little oil if you're buying anything at the store you are getting processed shit that is worse for you than most probably meats are in general like soy, eating straight meat is going to be better for you soy is not good for a man either soy is not good right? for anybody. So it's bad for women too. Like you're not allowed to eat soy when you're pregnant for, I think for a uh, good reason. Makes the frog gay. Yeah. Well, you know what? It'd be funny if what actually turned out to get, make the frogs gay was just one really sexy frog. Just been going around Kermit. throwing his frog legs out there. Well, <laughs> it's not easy being green, but if you'd like to try, I'll suck your dick. Hey, so anyway. Cody, Cody, they had the Muppets at the Steelers game. Or like uh, the game was in uh, since yeah, was play- like, he was, was playing quarterback. No, I mean like they they were on TV like as part of the like uh, <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger raped one of them in the bathroom. Can I blame it was the incredibly Muppets awkward for, for the Steelers' demise then? 
Probably. <laughs> What's going on with them? I thought they were awesome. Uh, Howie, you're getting into a uh, different right, show right, here. Howie, this is not yeah. Jenner Gamblers, yeah. which will never be on. Let's just <laughs> yes. make that clear. Still not permitted to ever come on. No, let's get stay talking. I got a lot of a lot of naughty or nice lists. So the premise of the show, for those of you who are new listeners, we've done it every year. It's never popular, but maybe first this time without JB. First time, first time without JB. Maybe that is the linchpin. Uh, <laughs> JB, our our no, resident resist. doctor of science, who <laughs> for some reason he can complete genome sequences, but he can't read his fucking emails to respond to them. But we've been doing this for many years, where we will look at. The uh, let's say newsmakers, let's say people that are active in our our world at large and rank them from our libertarian perspective on whether they have been naughty or nice on our libertarian roundtable, which is me, Brian McWilliams, Rudolph the Red Ear Drunk, John Odermatt, Howie, the godfather of Liberty Snowden, Liberty Rico, our legal counsel, and of course, your least favorite, Mark Clint. Wrapping up the hello, Roar. there he is. Bring in, bring in that personality sparkle. So I leave it all on the floor on Mondays, and I got nothing left after that. Yeah, it's a, I know it, for the next day. Yeah, well, tough shit, man. Man up, drink faster. Here we go. First on the naughty okay. or nice list, the country of China. Gentlemen, China, naughty or nice? Rico, maybe we should start with you, seeing as you've got a personal connection over there who is calling you angrily every so often. <laughs> ah, angrily? I don't remember any of that. Does, does well, that help? I mean, I th- um, <laughs> I've heard it talk to you in person, and it's always angrily, so I just have to I presume. I think that's just your accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they're very, it's like a German accent for the Asians. Yeah. Very severe. Uh, so, you know, you look at China... It's just how the left wants the country to be. But I think China is like more, would they be considered like a right wing authoritarianism or how would you even classify what they are? Yeah, I would are say they they're more right, right, the right authoritarianism, but they're also, they also lean very capitalist. Like they control certain aspects yeah. of the economy, but they are still a, a very, very capitalist country. So if so you look at China, country. if you look at China compared to the U.S., I think they're more capitalist. They have lower taxes. Um, they probably are less free in speech. And actually, uh, I was probably chatting, yeah, I was <laughs> chatting with Rebecca on FaceTime the other day. And normally we don't chat on FaceTime, but I said something about China and she like she was in her apartment and she looked around <laughs> and she's like, I really don't want to talk about fraud? this. <laughs> uh, I, and I'm like, really? She's like, and then she told me like two stories. She said her friend was sitting in a cafe talking with someone like a couple weeks ago and Hong Kong came up and he, just, and he just said something about Hong Kong. Later that day, the police knocked on his door. He had to go to the police station. They interrogated him. And then he had wow. to sign something and put like a thumbprint saying he would not say anything critical of China. Wow, that's, well, that's, gonna, the social, that's the social credit score shit, man. Yeah, yeah. So see, that, that took car. It's those credit score took a big hit that day. He's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Rico, so, you ruined my social credit. I can't get loans. So I'm like, all right, well, I won't say anything. I'm like, I love China. It's great. Um, <laughs> they are allowed to party, judging by all their Wuhan beach parties. So, I mean, there's good and the bad. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, they did also, let's not forget, weld people into their homes and apartment complexes for uh, for a month on end and may have been responsible for the spread of this virus. Okay. Which we still don't know if it came out of a lab or not. Guess what and China they- has not had? Definitely did. Guess what China has not had? They've had no second wave. How is that possible? Uh, do we know that? Do we know that for a oh, fact? There's no. Like- oh, we knew the first wave of bodies piling up in Wuhan, right? But we wouldn't, no have a wave. There's no we wouldn't have wave. a second wave either if we stopped testing everybody. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key. Stop testing. That's the fucking key to There's no the Chinese CNN. Hence, no second wave, no third wave. They have far more freedom of movement in China. There, is a, the there is a CC net, CCN, though. I have yeah, but it's heard. not in their interest to uh, promulgate fear. There's a, right. what, what does the Chinese government get off making sure people live every moment in fear. They get nothing out of it. 
So there's no fear and they're living life. They can't really travel outside the country, but within the country, it seems like they can do whatever the fuck they want other than criticize the, China, the it, central government. Unless so. you're a Uyghur. Well, yeah. don't be more them. <laughs> unless you're in the concentration camps. <laughs> there yeah. Are the borders border. closed? Are foreigners allowed to come or are they allowed to leave? Or is yeah, it, is you it can if you have like your – if your uh, company gets some kind of approval, you know, if say you're like a – major company you can send people still for business um as far as like crossing you still can't even cross over to hong kong i guess um you can go to macau but like traveling outside the country is very difficult and i think they still do that like 14 day quarantine once you do go in but once you're in the country you can do whatever the fuck you want it seems like just don't right. criticize the government so i mean too lions liberty china yeah well I'm, <laughs> all man, right anybody else want to weigh in on china Hmm. Not really. Right, I think okay. Rico said enough. No. Yeah. I mean, I, no, I, I, so Rico said nice or not? No, yeah, I'm not giving any. I'm definitely naughty. But <laughs> compared to the U.S., I really the can't government or the country. The country I see is where the people live. We'll get, we'll get into live, the so. U.S. Oh. We'll get into the U.S. Don't you worry. We just had to start China. with China because I figured that was that was where a lot of things started that have put us in a certain situation this year. China is ex- extremely naughty. I mean, obviously, it's a uh, you know, very authoritarian government. Um, and I, I don't believe anything, any of their reporting, any of the reporting that's come out of China on the origination of the virus, on where, you know, where it came from, on the, on the first wave, on what happened there, on what's happening now. I, I don't believe any of it. Um, so who, who the hell what? knows what's going on? Cody, the even the, even the people dropping dead in the streets, it's, I think it was bullshit. Like it was propaganda. It probably I was trying to like scare us or something. It was a, mo- it was a Chinese mind fuck of the U S I'm a hundred percent convinced of that. They Whether it was, they got I it. do, I do <laughs> like that theory that it was an, ec- that it was a literally an economic weapon because really it, it doesn't off. fucking kill that many people. Yeah, they're destroying people's economies, but at the same time, China's economy also got fucked. I mean, they're not people are moving on from China, so it doesn't necessarily benefit them to sever off all of the income from people using China for all the manufacturing and everything else, and th- and have them you know export and go to Brazil or ex- or go uh, and take all of their manufacturing to the Philippines. So that doesn't make a lot of sense, honestly. At the same time, I could see them overplaying it, hyping it up so that it seems much worse so that other countries are impacted and do the same measures in order to even the playing field. And then they just go, okay, well, we know it's really bullshit. So we're just going to move on quicker and be able to recover faster. I really don't think they've taken that much of a hit from what I mean, uh, comparative to the Western countries compared to the EU and the U S I think their uh, economy did not go down as much. And it um, not, not nearly as volatile. I mean, the EU, doing well. They just said they're going to fucking lock down till April. I'm sure we're getting into something else. Like, (laughs) serious? It's fucking insane. Yeah. But what Odie said, just real quick, he says he does not believe any of the reporting coming out of China. I counter, how much reporting do you believe being spread in the U.S.? None. More or less or the same. (laughs) Exactly. None. I don't yeah, believe exactly. any reporting anywhere. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I believe Only nothing. reporting from Howie Snowden's news release can be trusted. And that's why you should join the Pride at the $15 a month or higher level. Annual level Mark for three months. In- Mark is just an infomercial. That's yes. what he is. <laughs> a very <laughs> unexcited and slow infomercial. If you were, and if you were Where can I try put in a plug? You could be watching right now as I reveal the giant zit on the side of my head. Oh, God. It's really disgusting. Br- brutal. Brutal, right? That's why you I should said be giving out refunds. Drunk. But really, I mean, God, it's. I already popped it too. I already popped it and put shit on it. It's just, it's a, it's a, a battle scar. I'm sure, battle your scar. Wife, your wife is drafting divorce papers as we speak due to that. That's, the only way my, my wife can come is by grinding herself along my giant zit. By the way, oh, that's why. Man. I was not <laughs> expecting that response. Who would listen to this show after this? <laughs> People that appreciate fine improv comedy. That's it. Because nobody expected that answer. Pow! Out of left field, bitches. All right. So China's naughty, right? We all can unanimously agree. China's <laughs> naughty. Good. Moving on. So next. we know I, never the- said that, I never said they were naughty, by the way. But, you know. All right. Well, what is China then, Mark? It's nice? 
Are we judging the government or the people? I don't judge the people of China negatively. So if that's what we're talking about. We're judging about, the country of China as a whole. And the yeah, there's, more, government. there's more the people government. than government. And most of them are probably working hard to live their life. We're so. judging the government. Nice Mark, for Mark. China. Oh, okay. Ch- yeah. Wow. Well, Mark's really playing it up. What? Listen to that. Mark, I just listen assumed you were talking about the government. Well, I was just talking, talking about the government. The people of China don't affect us in any way whatsoever. Other than clearly talking. Has Mark been compromised by Fang Fang? Yeah. <laughs> he wishes i do wish <laughs> that's not bad i told you i tried to facebook friend her couldn't find her that's Too weird that she didn't accept i'm surprised well i like couldn't it. even find her to offer look my my uh acceptance rate on friending chinese women online is close to 90 percent so all right we're, we're half an hour in with one so far how well, you staying up all night here uh, yes, you are. All right, moving on. Anti-maskers. Are anti-maskers naughty or nice? Let's start with John Odermatt for this one. So anti-maskers, naughty or Anti-maskers, nice. not pro-maskers, I, anti-maskers. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, yeah, I, I think they're they're nice. I mean, they're, uh, as long as you're, they're not going and spitting in people's faces or doing shit like that, if somebody's minding their business and walking around without a mask, they're, they're, they're a nice human being. I have no problem with that. All right. Anybody else want to weigh in? Howie, Rico? Yeah, I Mark? think they're, they're nice as well, if be, considering the fact that masks do nothing and Fauci knows it, the fucking CDC, they all know it. So there's something else behind this whole goddamn mask thing. And I mean, I, I really oh. just feel feel bad for kids like like little babies growing up not seeing people's faces like it's it's messed up world it's all about submission it, it, I, actually what i really think it is is we would forget there's a pandemic if everyone had a mask on because nobody's fucking dying or nothing's happening like you need that reminder that oh no there's a pandemic that's why you have the masks on it's such bullshit and i wouldn't like if a business says you have to wear a mask i'm gonna wear a mask it's their business but this whole thing is fucked up well that's that's i guess where the there's a little bit of a wrinkles like the anti-mask people that you know that will refuse to wear masks or will you know will t- have a plane turn around in mid-air are they in the right you know because they it, like you said it's a private business requiring you to do it and i'm not talking Isn't about the really two, two two-year-olds wouldn't wear a mask nothing private, private, really, airlines. private business airlines requiring you to do it almost you you know this is where the line gets blurred because it's you know, the, it's private business requiring you to do it at the behest of the government that's requiring them to do it to stay open. So for the most part, it's really not the private business do it, asking you to do it. It's the private business being forced to ask you to do it so the, so the state will let it stay open. So I wouldn't really use the private business argument. It, actually, so I, I was listening to this guy from South Africa talking about it. So there he said, if he goes into business, he thinks master bullshit. He's like, I'm going to put one on because – if I'm in their business without a mask on, they get fucked. They're going to get fined thousands of dollars. Right, yeah. It happen. He's like, I don't think we should have to do it. I think it's nonsense, but I would be hurting them if I went in there without a mask on and they got fined and had all these penalties. Like, And I, I would agree. I think it would be a pretty selfish asshole thing to do. I think there's other ways to go out and protest and like get your message out than uh, you know, hurting these private businesses. But I, I don't think that's really something that happens in the U.S. I I don't know. I just hate the mask. Here's the thing about masks, though. I think it has facilitated or brought to like the forefront authoritarian urges and random people Mm -hmm. who just like yelling at you to put on a mask. For example, the local rec center now makes you wear a mask at all times. Even when working out. And I was like, what the fuck? You want me to wear a mask when doing cardio? You're like, oh, we're trying to stay open. I'm like, okay, that's fucking retarded. But you you have to sign up for like the basketball court. You have to sign up online to get 45 minutes. And you can only have people in your household. Yeah, in that, quote unquote, in, that, in your household. In that half court. You know, and it's, yeah. there's like the big fucking things that come down Bring and separate. Roommate. Yeah. So yeah. me and Jordan are playing basketball there like a week ago. We're on the far side of the court. There's no way anyone can see us. This fucking woman who works at um, the rec center somehow notices I'm not wearing a mask. I'm talking on the phone. She like marches <laughs> there. She glares at me. I know what she's fucking doing. And I just it's perfectly right take like an extra five minutes on the phone call. And she's just staring at me, getting madder and madder. <laughs> and then she's like, put on your mask. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you're a fucking random rec center worker and you're flipping out at me. It's not a state requirement that we wear masks at a gym because I'm a member at a different gym. You don't have to wear a mask. It's not a mandate in the city. It's the fucking rec center made their up their own rule. She's an employee at the rec center and she's flipping out at me for not wearing a mask while talking on the phone when you're only allowed to be on the half court as a person that you live in a household with. So what the fuck sense does it make? Yet she has, has her authoritarian, oh, I finally get to have power. That, I think half the people that are pro-mask like mm-hmm. yelling at other people what to do. Let's cancel. Uh, let's cancel. And you're not doing your part. Happening. You're not doing your part in this fight, in this battle, in yeah. this war that we're all in together. And if you're not in it together, then you need to be scolded for that. You need to be told well, to do. The, the people that are, are the most pro mask are, are, of course, falling into that left right spectrum of authoritarian, authoritarian left. No, authoritarian left. And it makes sense that they want to yell at people because if there's nothing, if there's one thing that we know authoritarian leftists feel the best about, it's about being righteous, right? So they feel that being righteous includes yelling at you for wearing a mask. So of course, this plays perfectly into their entire ego worldview. And they're going to take vast pleasure in making sure that they know, like, I mean, how many people have you seen that you know that are leftists that post pictures of them in their fucking stupid masks online and in every social media photo when it makes no sense? When they're alone in a fucking field, they have their goddamn mask on because they want you to know that they are on the side of right and good. So, so it's all part and parcel. Oh, so I, I was at the uh, George Washington Masonic Memorial. This better not be the, a goddamn other, ghost story. The other day, and there were like a <laughs> hundred and twenty kids there doing like a televised version of the Nutcracker. And they had very elaborate, awesome costumes, but they also had masks on. But the masks have like. <laughs> They had like the rosy cheeks and the like the <laughs> face like 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 a nutcracker look like it's like Terrifying. Jesus. Here's where we're at now. Uh, that's just like out of a fucking sad. horror movie. This is really sad. I mean, yeah. it's also pissed off. Why could I only have ten people at my lodge meeting there, but they could have 120 kids fucking putting on this production? Well, that's what they're saying about entertainment uh, industry in Hollywood too. Is like they're forcing all these restaurants and all these other industries to close down and not allowing them to operate. But meanwhile, Hollywood gets permission to have. 300 fucking people on set all together and yeah, they've got their masks on, but still, okay. If you can have all these people together, 300 people on a fucking studio set, why can't you have people in a business? Why can't you do someone's nails? Why can't you do someone's hair when you have five or six people in there? And there's no fucking sense to it. So you guys closed, closed down all that again, haircuts and nails and everything's closed yep. down again. Holy all shit. again. Yeah. My I wife's saw, my I, wife's I, nails look like some fucking bull weevil's been attacking her at night. Like there. I saw kids. a nail salon today that said it was open. I had a sign that was open anyway by my house. I don't know. San, my my wife Sandy, she's she cannot get her nails done because her, where she goes is closed down. And like other shit, mm-hmm. she's gone to as like secret. You know, they're like they do it out of their apartments now. I haven't gotten a professional beard trim in nine months. I've got. I haven't gotten one in my life. A professional. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that, who gets a professional beard trim? Get some fucking clippers, you pussy ass. Yeah, my wife does now, but my the guy who I normally have, <laughs> the guy who I normally have does it. It takes five minutes. It takes her like a half hour. He does. First, he does my beard. Then he does my pubes. Then he glues whatever holes are in the beard. He uses the pubes and glues them to my face to make the beard look fuller. And he does a great professional job. <laughs> thank you, Howie. All right, naughty or nice anti-maskers then. I mean, obviously nice. Nice. Howie? No, naughty. I can't believe they said nice. Anti-maskers are nice. What the fuck is wrong with you? Get out of An- libertarianism, you bastards. Anti-maskers, Howie? Anti-maskers. Oh. <laughs> Wait, yeah, anti-maskers <laughs> are nice. Yes, anti-maskers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you no, said, no, you said yeah. You know what anti, anti means, Howie? Uh, the, Can we get a dictionary the, for the, Howie? The fumes Anti, from the super glue yes. holding Howie's pubes to his beard has gotten a little woozy. So would you, uh, as an extension of this, would you call naughty libertarians and those types that say you should be free to choose, free, you should be essential, but hey, wear your mask, social distance, do everything that they say to do otherwise. Yeah, yes, they should, they should get them. the wall. They They're playing into the, the states. Do what the state tells you to do. Where social distance? What the fuck is social distance? Six feet it's made up. When did six feet pop it's up? Made up. Because it's made at up. The, first, the start of the pandemic, it was three feet, right? Then it became six feet. Joe no Biden is eight feet. Reason. Eight feet for, for Joe. Is that true? Oh, wow. Well, that that's a good segue to our next topic. By the way, Dude, there, there, there was something. It was like six feet. 
only six people, and there's like another six roll. I forget what it's yeah. like. What six six six? Really? Yeah. This is mean, the rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's six, get, six, let's... six. Did you hear Joe Biden? Um, like two weeks ago, he's giving a speech and he starts coughing. Like, <laughs> so sorry, I'm getting over a cold. How the wait a cold? Yeah. I don't know anybody who's had a cold other than Brian in the past, That's, like, seven, Rico eight months. Rico had a cold. Mark had a cold. We've all, the, it's flu cold. season, man. Everybody's had colds. People haven't had fucking COVID. It's just all false positive tests because all the coronaviruses get lumped into one test. Well, well, still, okay, so say he does have a cold. How does he get a cold if he's just staying eight feet away from everyone and living in his basement? How do you even get Well, Hunter, Hunter Biden probably came over to visit. You know, he's been fucking his way through at least 17 different brothels over the last few months. That's obviously the answer. Ladies, gentlemen, lentilmans, I need to remind you of some good friends of ours, Nate and Charlie, over at the Good Morning Liberty Podcast, bringing you your shot of liberty every day, uh, hitting on your current events, also taking some broad overlooks over kind of how we're going to relate to the normies from libertarian perspectives. Also, Nate and Charlie, as I mentioned before, are both working within the healthcare industry. And that's something interesting because I find that libertarians have to know their, uh, dot their I's, cross their Q's, I don't know, motorboat their P's, I forget what that phrase is. But point being, on healthcare, we need to be accurate because that's something that's weighing high on people's minds during COVID. Nate and Charlie are experts at breaking down how the healthcare industry works and where as libertarians we can get in there and say, hey, let's do this a little different. Here's what's accurate. Here's what's not. So check them out anywhere podcasts are heard. Good morning, Liberty. They support us. We support them. You should support both of us. Go with Jeebus. They shared the same $100 bill when they were snorting lines, Odie. Oh, uh, yeah. Lines. That's Joe's uh, actual medication. It's not any uh, sort of anti-dementia. It's just straight. That's how he does. Things. That's what he does good at the debates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <He's> exactly. Like, <laughs> they're like, Joe, can we do a five minute touch up? And they go in with like, you know, like those big powder pads they use to get people <laughs> shine off. They're just full of cocaine. He's just like, ah, ah. What's I'm not ready to get him. Q-tip, pork chop, screw, screw pop, pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be a, pop. an amazing pop. debate. <laughs> If the debate was Trump and Biden sitting on a, some dumpy couch, passing a mirror back and forth, <laughs> doing lines and trying to get in a word in edgewise, that's my vote for the never. Moderated um, by Howie. If they did that <laughs> debate every night, I would watch it every night. <laughs> that's the government I could get behind. That's a real White House. Can we monetize yes, that idea? Yeah. Yes, obviously. All right. So let's talk about, yeah, we, we talked about. You know, oh, it'd be nice to wear a mask. So I have a couple different topics. We can kind of tie one into the other, though. Let's talk about Joe Bishop Henchman and the Libertarian Party and then talk about Joe Jorgensen. Now, I'm sure Rico has no clue who jo Joe Bishop Henchman is. I think is. I can check out for this one. I don't know who the fuck these people are. All uh, right. Well, we probably could skip him. He's the new chair of the Libertarian Party. And I don't know. I haven't seen much out of him. I mean, compared to the Sarwarks of the world, who was very vocal and uh, and uh, aggravating on Twitter, Henchman seems to not have done that much. But at the same time, the Libertarian Party has tweeted out shit like, you know, we don't have to wear a mask, but it'd be really good if you were a polite and good citizen, as well as many other stupid fucking takes about everything from racial equality through to, uh, I don't know, probably feminist nonsense. So where do you rank the Libertarian Party in 2020? Naughty or nice start You're talking joe me. bishop henchman or the libertarian party these are different let's, things. you know uh, actually fuck joe bishop henchman let's just talk libertarian party <laughs> i mean at... seriously has anyone heard a single thing from him since the because i would probably call him nice mentioned. because i, I haven't heard why, a damn thing that's actually why i had him on because i was like i haven't seen him do fucking nothing so maybe somebody can talk to me and tell me what he's been doing all right let's just talk for five minutes well, about him he's probably I just seen doing nothing. the job of chair and not actually tweeting at podcasters so i would call that a positive step in the right that's direction a, that's a nice okay is it how is it a, i mean it's a, okay so well the, compared the to what everyone party, was, 2020 has been a disgusting shit show i was gonna never give them money again disassociate get away from it because it's just bullshit the things that they've been doing but then how he listened to a podcast <laughs> but then well no there are some people one there are some good voices like angela mccardle and the fact that Dave Smith is planning some big things and taking it over, I'm like, you know what? 
I'm not one of those people that think it can't be a useful tool. I think it can be um, like, I'm more of the use it to spread the message. Like fuck the actual winning election shit. We need to change hearts and minds. And if we're going to start throwing bombs, like that would be awesome. If the Dave Smith faction and people like Angela McCardle can get into leadership positions, I'm going to stick with it for a while longer and see if we can actually put it to good work. But the way that, well, the way Joe Jorgensen ran a campaign, the way that the social justice warrior left leading libertarians have been like running the party and tweeting in the social media. It's a naughty. Yep. Odie. Uh, you know, it's it, at the end of the day, it, it's a naughty because I don't agree with anything they're doing. I don't agree with the direction. I think just based on what's happened with this last election, my view of politics in general has changed. I don't think there's any way that the Libertarian Party could possibly have any sort of meaningful influence at the federal level or probably at the state level. Maybe in some local races you're going to have influence, which is good in your community. Probably that's where you can get the, you know, the most bang for your buck, actually changing things at the local level. But with that being said, you know, I, I think not even changing hearts and minds, which that would be sort of like a, uh, a secondary benefit, but I'm just looking for the Libertarian Party to have someone in you know leadership, a, a chair, and eventually a uh, presidential candidate, vice presidential candidate, who just fucking starts throwing haymakers. We got us. I mean, we're sick of the Libertarian Party sitting back and trying to play this game and look at us. We're wearing nice suits. We're just like you. And we're saying nice things. And uh, you know, we're just trying to fit in with the duopoly. Fuck that shit, man. We need some people to stand up there and just start swinging. And I don't, I don't really care what happens if we get delegitimized, people laugh at us. Fuck it. I mean, you got to give it a shot. Nothing nothing else is working. We're not going to yeah. suddenly get in the government and get in there and fix everything. That's not going to fucking happen. We so need to get, let's have some fun. We need to get John McAfee out of prison. We do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's what Ron Paul had his biggest success by going out there and throwing haymakers. You're know, talking about the is worst. Is he going to have to eat his own dick in prison? And that's the Fed. The kind of well, I hope so. Uh, I mean, just Bitcoin has to be like a half a million or a million. What is it, Howie? Hey, hey we've all made stupid bets. I, I'm going to cut him some stuff. <laughs> all but bet we eat our dick. So, hey, I, <laughs> I, I paid Brian on our bet. Odie, if you would just send me like what PayPal email address, I'll pay you. Oh, you. fantastic. I will. I, yep. I mean, I, I have to use that money to probably pay out Rico. Odie uses <laughs> mark.clair at paypal.com or at g.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, getting back to the topic. Okay, so no, fair point. I, I give Joe Bishop Henchman a naughty because the Libertarian Party, to your guys' point, put out all sorts of fucking horrible, cringy, leftist, Black Lives Mattering, you know, woke left garbage messaging the entire presidential campaign and continues to do so to this day. So Bench, Joe Bishop Henchman clearly has some, some say over what goes out. And by allowing them to do that, clearly he's going down Sarwark Road again and trying to embrace the left, which we have seen does not work. Will never work unless they drastically change how they approach it, which I'm going to talk about in my, you know, my overview for what we need to do in, in uh, 2021. And by the way, if you're wondering what that sound is, it's John Odermatt's shitty chords hitting the fucking microphone and it's making not, it sound like my, they're not hitting. They're not that hitting. was actually Howie leaving to go pee. Yeah. No, I heard it while Odie was talking. I still blame you. So I give him a naughty, naughty for the Libertarian Party. Absolutely just just awful, awful showing and messaging. And naughty for Joe Bishop Henshin for uh, overseeing a continuation of the same policies as his predecessor. Does the chair run on the social media? Uh, the chair, well, dude, he's not got a, people running it, question. but that's a real question. No, so, well, Sarwar clearly had let he had clearly guided the messaging tactics as he agreed with everything that they were saying. As chair, both Joe, Joe Bishop Henchman ran on a platform of messaging of how you know how we need to reform the messaging, and he had a you know messaging in mind. As did Joe uh, or uh, oh my god, I'm blanking on uh, Josh Smith. Joe Henchman, Joe Bishop Henchman won. So clearly, he is putting messaging into place that he believes will take the party forward. What I see happening is them just simply appealing to the left and the left already has their fucking messaging out there. They already won an election with their shitty messaging, if it's to be believed. So why would they look to the libertarians for an answer to that? See, I thought that Joe Bishop, Bishop Henchman, 
JBH. Was Let's just call him JBH. Yeah, it's annoying um, to say it. Didn't he just run on, well, I'm a really smart guy. I'm a lawyer and I can raise money. I thought that's what he ran on. And at the LA convention, the organization he definitely and the sort of thing. Yeah, well, he talked. He distinctly said that he had a plan for libertarian messaging moving forward for the party. So I only can presume that that is being put into play right now when we're seeing stupid pro mask uh, messages coming out on Twitter and et cetera, by virtue of his, you know, saying yes, this is what we want to go. This is the kind of thing we want to do, and these are the people we want to reach. Gay. He's literally gay. Now he's gay. He's actually, I know. He's actually I know. Gay. <laughs> my, my, my jokes are meant to hit on multiple levels. <laughs> oh, good. Well, excellent. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Here's we're getting answer. canceled. And, Great, Howard. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, please. We've done far worse. All right. Yeah. Dude, I, Ron I, Paul I, just got an episode taken off YouTube and like told like if he gets another strike, that's it. I mean, we're 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 done too. Come on. <laughs> it's a matter of time. I think it's a badge of pride. All right, next. Here's an interesting one. Um, let's talk about Reason Editor, Elizabeth Nolan Brown. Mm. Naughty or nice <laughs> after she had come after the Ron Paul supporting contingent of the Liberty Party. Who should we start with? Mark Claire. Uh, who, go ahead, Mark. Well, overall, her work over the years is pretty good. But if you're just if you're talking about the specific thing where she did the tweet, well, I we can take the, the people, overall her I'll overall naughty her, work. I'll naughty her on the tweet. <laughs> no, I'll yeah, we're talking the overall year. I just have to point out that this is something that had raised a lot of ire. I talked about it on my show, obviously, but I agree her overall body of work is quite good. Um, although I do feel that she also tends to. By the way, that's not God. me making that sound. That is not me. I'm not freaking doing a thing. So that's somebody <sighs> else. It's not, it's not me. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, all I know is that her writing tends to be virulently anti-Trump. So is that something where – do you take that into account as well? You know, it's like do you want somebody – when you're reading Liberty-centric articles, taking into account that she has bashed Ron Paul and, uh, and said that he brought racism into the party. And that she has. What, again, was not the to say tweet? That, what was the actual tweet? She's gone after right. Tom Woods and Dave Smith too. She said, "Okay, here's the actual tweet." I actually just pulled it up. So, okay, good. This is a response. So she posted. Um, Austin Peterson sent out Ron Paul libertarians prefer Trump, and she retweeted it with the quote: "A whole lot of Ron Paul libertarians were never libertarians in the first place." And then I guess a, a subtweet to that was: uh, "Ron Paul brought libertarians." a wave of racist dingbats who like Liberty in only a few areas from which we are still digging ourselves out. Good. The fuck riddance. She's yeah, a that's pretty dumb. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not that's one not, of the options. Howie. <laughs> yeah. I, we do not as a, the lions of Liberty as a podcast do not officially endorse the position that Elizabeth Nolan Brown is a cunt. I want to make that very specifically clear. Exactly. Um, so now, d- I, does anyone even look at reason anymore i mean they became very progressive in a lot of their they writings did. over the last yes. few years like i don't even i used to go there every day and every headline's just fucking bullshit now there's a couple good writers still but 90 percent of their crap is left-leaning bullshit and it's just like I, yeah I've, i used to subscribe to that i'm like i will never give them another dime they're not they're barely libertarians at this it, some are not libertarians at all in defense I of would, reason, they did send the Lions of Liberty a, a beautiful, uh, delicious uh, <laughs> box of cookies. Which and I'll I'm never really? know. Are like. you serious? Yes. Well, we also sent them uh, a box of money cookies because we, we sent it in a box. box. <laughs> yeah, we literally sent a box. So, no, I mean, look, reason, I, I still read reason. him a dick in the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's how he's dick in the box. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat it, Jack. Dude, John Mack is gonna lose the I, John I, I, gonna I, lose the bet because how he's gonna cut his dick off and mail it to reason. <laughs> I, I I don't normally speak like this. When you come after Ron Paul, it gets my Irish up. I just Yeah, yeah. All right. Though but reason and John, look, I still read Reason, how he puts it in his news links that we get every day. Patreon, fifteen dollars or higher, you get those links. I tell Marks, you what you though, I, I used to camera. I used to share most uh, of the reason stories because they were usually pretty good. Nowadays yeah. it's about 50-50 because there's a bunch of bullshit on there, and I'm like 
it's not that the news links I sent out are, I agree with this. I oh, no, exactly. Left, right, and independent. But some of this is like, this is just bullshit garbage. I'm not sending this out to our people. This isn't going to give them any insight into the right or the left or anything. It just fucking sucks. Yeah, well. I you know, disagree uh, wonder- with that comment. They've been pretty good on COVID. Well, yeah, a Facebook user watching our live, feed, live stream said they've been pretty good on COVID. Good I would Facebook say that user. better than Julie Browski. I, I think that, she, yeah, I, well, I think they actually have been okay on COVID. Personally, I think that they've been pretty good at standing. I'm pretty good at saying what has worked and hasn't. Um, I do think that, to Howie's point, I think they have gotten Enrico's point. They definitely have trended far more left than I am comfortable with personally. And I think that Donald Trump has a lot to do with that. And I think that there's a, quite a bit of TDS that's circulating through reason. I do think Elizabeth Nolan Brown, they call her an anarchist, but I, I mean, I feel like her statements what? on Ron Paul, they, yes, they do. I, I, I know they call her the resident anarcho capitalist, which I shake my head at. But I do think that her statements, and I called her out on this on Twitter, I thought they were stupid. I thought it was a bad take. And it's just one of those things where you can't broadly say the man who has been the most, I I mean, by far the most, the largest and most successful recruiter and mentally, uh, as far as getting the concepts out into the world for liberty and for liberty philosophy has been Ron Paul. And to broadly paint all of his, all of his uh, followers as racist or dingbats who don't really like liberty is like Hillary Clinton labeling all of Trump supporters deplorable. So it's just, it's a, very stupid thing to say. So one thing but I don't about think Ron, that everything that she does. So one thing about Ron Paul, a lot of that racism tag that Ron Paul carries is from those newsletters, right? That were in like the 70s right. or 80s. Yeah. So how come Joe Biden doesn't get tagged with bringing racism back to the Democratic Party? Because he worked with fucking Jesse Helms. When was Did, that? Yeah. Campbell said he was racist a couple months ago. I, well, <laughs> reason, <laughs> reason. If you look right. at when, um, like the week before the campaign, I think over fifty percent of the reason uh, writers said they were going to vote for Biden. Yeah, they, You're I know. Criticizing a lot of Trump yeah. or uh, Ron Paul for. Uh, Having some kind well, this, of fucking this tangential like relationship sh- with these uh, these newsletters, but not criticizing you're going to vote for Joe Biden. I think what we can fuck? separate reason from Elizabeth. No, I think Elizabeth Noel Brown's tweets do not represent reason. I think that's fair to say. Reason's um, worse than her. <laughs> I, I don't fair, agree with that. Enough, she's, she's right. Of uh, you're going to make our, you're going to make their ad rates go up for us if we ever want to advertise them again. So. Did we ever find out who wrote those newsletters? Jeffrey Tucker. The Ron Paul newsletters? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. No, that's not a fact at all. No, I thought I mean, it might no, be true, I, but I. Michael not, Bowman no, says, true. Michael Bowman, our friend at the 10th Amendment Center, says he knows, but he would not tell us, which makes me very angry. It's Jeffrey Tucker, 100%. You know, I'm against, <laughs> I am now against the 10th Amendment. <laughs> but honestly, if, right. you read, if you read the newsletters, they're not racist. That's like, the whole point. That's They're the whole un- thing. It was like, like uncomfortable truths, maybe not said in the most couth way. That she yeah. Could have. No. yeah, they might have been said in a way to maybe drum up support from possibly some people who have, yeah, have racist maybe. tendencies. Maybe <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, they weren't they weren't like outright racist newsletters. That's that's a that's a lie. But to go back to Elizabeth Nolan Brown, she's been on Felony Friday before. I like a lot of stuff she does, you know, nothing against her. But when she did send that tweet out, I did tell her I lost all respect for her. So, you know, maybe there's that. She does good work <laughs> on sex work. She does. She that's does. true. No, she does much, good work. On, she does that's good pretty work much on it, right? Show. All right. Well, then what do you what what is the vote then? Nolan Brown, Elizabeth Nolan Brown, naughty or nice? Howie? No. Howie says Let's do like the Roman naughty. Emperor. Everybody's naughty. Gonna, Oh, but no, well, we're, I, mean, I gotta give her naughty. I mean, we wouldn't have this podcast without Ron Paul. So naughty. Sorry. That is a fact, Mark. I'm naughty for the tweet. Nice for everything else. Oh, come on, Mark. Come on. Everything she's good on, she's good on well, most other things. She's not good on everything else. No. If you've been reading her columns lately, which I do, well, it, I don't. Uh, so. it's, it's hit and miss. Right. Me, so, miss. so listeners, you don't know this, but Brian told me I cannot send out any news links that have to do with Mary Trump. And oh, I, but she's freaking retarded. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I almost what are you thought censoring about Howie. You're I censoring almost Howie, Brian. I almost yeah, thought he, about Brian's YouTube. He's Facebook. I, <laughs> I almost decided to put Elizabeth Nolan Brown in that category too. She's like a Mary, <laughs> Mary Trump, practically. Well, Trump she, I, she does have TDS very severely. Um, 
But no, I just thought Howie, I was like, I don't care about Mary Trump, what she's saying about Trump. It was just dumb. It was just like stupid bullshit. I just was sick of seeing it. I didn't tell oh, he couldn't. I just said, if I you're care, I don't want to getting your news from the news links, perhaps you don't know who Mary Trump is because Brian has censored content. <laughs> like the mainstream media censored Hunter Biden story. You're a fucking hypocrite. Brian, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Rico, Elizabeth Nolan Brown, naughty or nice? Ah, uh, whatever. Naughty, I guess. I don't know enough about her. Particularly uh, I, also say, I also gave Elizabeth Nolan Brown a naughty on the year. Naughty! You're naughty, Elizabeth Nolan Brown. Fix your shit. All right, next. Can, can, can oh. you, uh, when this is over, tweet out the list with the final verdicts on everyone? Yeah. He's, he's not going to do that. But it's not going to have like a consent. Well, I guess we could. Yeah. Well, I just I just want to see like no, we'll have, have like naughty. have like a thumbs up and thumbs down. I you know that would get people to listen. Have, like, actually, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like three. All right. Next, three up, Tulsi, one down. Tulsi Gabbard. Naughty or oh, nice? Boy. Tulsi. Tulsi. See, it's Tulsi. like it's what we always have to judge on the curve. Like, are we judging? Obviously, we're not judging all these people as libertarians because if you're judging her as a libertarian. Then she's naughty because she's not. She's no, a socialist. We're so, judging on reality. Uh, just, well, just Howie, like, let me build up my <laughs> statement. Jeez, <laughs> but I'm not necessarily as I've discussed on. Um, but I kind of talked about this as Pete Quinone is like I don't really even look at left right anymore. It's it's like are you? It's, it's not even like are you a red or blue pill. It's like are you retarded or are you just like <laughs> do you just repeat what you say? <laughs> you just repeat what you hear on TV. Like that's that's the question, you know. And Tulsi Gabbard is one of the few people that at least like confronts the narrative at least we'll still vote against bad bills uh overall even though i don't agree with her politics i don't know how much that really matters because she's not yeah she's not really blue she's blue pilled in a way of course because she does believe in her political brand of things but she's red pilled in a in a more important way i think so uh, well uh, well very recently she's been give her a nice. I'd, say, I'd say very red pilled because a lot of the shit that she's introducing is is uh pretty goddamn good um, let me bring up some of her recent bills. Oh, I've, got, I've, got, I've got it all in my head. I was okay. going to say, she's nice. I'm going to say the four most recent things I've heard from her. She has gone together with Thomas Massey for a, like mm-hmm. get rid of the Patriot Act bill. She has a bill to protect women's sports, to keep trans people who are actually men from competing against women. I think that's pretty yep. great. She has uh, put, put forth a bill for survivors of abortion, like, you know, babies that are born alive, not to be killed after they're, you know, babies. And ooh, what was the fourth one? Oh, yeah. She came out today on the COVID spending thing. Like, this is bullshit. All this money going, all this nonsense. Yep. And the American people. She also, she also has gone out and said that it was horseshit that, uh, you know, all these fucking politicians and everybody else was getting vaccines before the, uh, the elderly. Although I think the elderly can quarantine their own fucking asses perfectly well and uh, don't necessarily need to be getting the. If, if you believe that, if you believe what they think, though, that the vaccine is good and helps you, it, it's bullshit that they're not giving it to the elderly. But if you know the truth, that it's probably going to kill a lot of them. Then maybe it's a big deal. Well, what do, you, what do you think about. So our, our Patreon member, Maurice Jones, had said, what Tulsi's naughty. This is a comment on Facebook. Her tax of excess profits. What about that one? How you know about that? Yeah, I don't know about it. But so whatever. No, but I was that's reading about it where if are they kind of judging corporations like Amazon on how much extra money they made compared to what they would have oh, expected to be made? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. How the fuck you- so all the small businesses are getting fucked because the government won't let them operate. This has been a huge wealth transfer to mm-hmm. the big businesses. And she said, hey, I think we should tax these big businesses and make them fucking pay to help out the smaller businesses. They've got except that money's not going to go to the smaller businesses. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting because yeah, <laughs> it's never going to happen at all. But I, I brought I it up. It's, yeah. I brought it up. It's uh, introduced uh, resolution 1267, the pandemic pandemic crisis excess profits tax. And yes, it is exactly that. It is a tax on big box uh, retailers who have made excessive profits during this shutdown, and they're going to tax them excessively to pay off the small business. That, to Rico's point, there none of this tax is going to go to small businesses, and the government is going to, by the way, not only tax these companies and then give it to these smaller businesses if it happens, but you know they're going to fucking tax you on whatever they give you. So that it's going to be double taxation, but it's a persuasion so play for her more than a bill. Yeah, it's, not gonna happen. it's not going to happen. But no, no, let me make this point too, though. But let's not forget. And I said this from the beginning. Okay, so now you have government. Look, big box retailers are what they are. 
I have no problem with fucking Amazon making profits right now when everybody else is forced to shut down because they're making my life easier. And it's not Amazon's fault that the government mm-hmm. shut the fucking Wait a economy down. We, 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 hold don't, on, we hold on. don't know that. Plus, I a lot of individuals make that. money on Amazon using yeah, Amazon. And a, lot, and a lot of people are employed by Amazon does while Jeff everything Bezos else is shut down. sit on like a CIA advisory board? Well, he, they their cloud is provided by him. But he, I think he has more ties to the CIA than just that. Like he's got, it's like a multi-million dollar contract with him. Rico, no, if I he mean, had real he's not no, some policy shaping. Rico, no. Like, let me let me let me uh, dissuade you from thinking Jeff Bezos was any sway with the CIA. If he had sway with the CIA, Mackenzie Bezos would have been fucking killed well before she could divorce him and take half his money. There you go. <laughs> she just gave like five billion dollars to charity. Or okay. he divorced her be- right before COVID nineteen, where his profits just went up exponentially. So he got yeah, out. Exact that's right why, time. That's what why he's, that's what he he owns the Washington there. Post. He makes the right moves at the right times. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Bezos naughty. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Bill oh, Gates well, he, naughty. Bill Gates definitely <laughs> naughty. Uh, but they're not on the list. Okay, so go back to Tulsi Gabbard. What's your ruling then? Tulsi Gabbard, who uh, except for this excess tax list, again, I I uh, completely agree with Maurice. I reject this fucking bullshit bill. But in general, Tulsi Gabbard. 2020. And let's not forget, she also, even though Kamala Harris rose from the dead like some sort of fucking cunty zombie, uh, Tulsi Gabbard also took Kamala out of the fucking presidential race. Pow! Gunshot to the head on being a cop. And jokes Why? on her because Kamala's to be president in about three months. Why in pig rooms? Yeah. 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 Yes. Unless it's Trump. Uh- just based on the fact that she's like Mark said, she's a, seems to be a functioning human being who does not just parrot, you know, the democratic talking points. And yes, she misses on excess profits, but at least she points out the fucking issue, even being a problem with uh, lockdowns leading to this when most other politicians just completely ignore it as being an issue. Um, obviously I don't think it's, you can do that. You can't just, you know, tax, uh, Amazon or Walmart or all these grocery stores that are making tons of money and transfer the wealth. It's not the right thing to do, but at least she's talking about it. At least she's drawing attention to it. And, uh, yeah, she took Kamala out. So nice. She was also yeah. against the Congress people getting the vaccine before the elderly. I think somebody said that. Yeah, I said that already. Yeah. Well, All let's right. not forget too. She also was uh, also brought up and and really condemned the fucking war state the entire time she was on stage. That was her fucking. Well, that how was about, her running. How about running her run. call out of Hillary Clinton this year about like like the what did she even say? Oh, because Hillary Clinton tried she, to she demonize her, like, her and make her a Russian like, asset, like the, <laughs> the like the oh, cesspool yeah. of the Democratic Party or something like the. I don't know. I can't remember the exact words, but she yeah. had it awesome. That's what Bill Clinton movie. always says when he's about to have sex. He's like, give us some of that cesspool, the Democratic Party. So t- talking about Tulsi made me think about. Uh, no, we're finishing Governor, up this daughter of nice first. Governor Christy Noem, did you guys see her Instagram post or yield, wielding a flamethrower? <laughs> what? No. It's pretty awesome. I think we should move to South Dakota. Oh, well, maybe so. It. It's fucking cold. Florida though. sounds better. That's why you need a flamethrower. It gets real cold. All right. Naughty or nice, uh, Howie? Oh, Tulsi? Nice. Nice. Rico says nice. Odie, nice. Mark? I said nice. Nice. I also give a nice. It's an all-over nice. Thumbs up emoji for Tulsi in the tweets. I don't know know if he uh, is on the list, but we don't need to do a whole discussion about it, or we can. But I think we should – Give the Florida governor, as well as this Christy Gnome character, nices for being steadfastly. Well, I shouldn't say steadfastly. There was a short lockdown in Florida, very short. But for being true uh, fucking heroes, not caving into this fear that yeah. they're trying to pump out now, and some of the few places that are just not going to lock down. And like, I don't think Florida's ever going to lock down. I can't even, but I'm sure they're going to politically target this guy. But I can't imagine the population because of the president that's been set ever putting up with it at this point. I agree. Um, I, I, I think we'll all agree with that. Christy and I'm just saying they both uh, get nice. I, I don't know if I'll agree with that. Okay. Uh, I might, have a lot I, to get through here. I, I, I oh, might God. agree with it. But well, so DeSantis. I'm retiring with, in 10 minutes. DeSantis met with some actual uh, scientists and figured out all this shit was bullshit. And Florida's open. It's great. 
I give him a nice for that aspect. But he also showed up on the list from like the Hunter Biden emails of the, hey, with the Chinese government, people like, this is one of our guys. He'll help you out. He'll give you the money. He was on that list. So I don't know that I totally trust DeSantis. Well, I don't have to totally not. trust him to be happy about the one since, thing. Since, since, I, that's, I since that can't be proven, I'll give him a nice. All right. I don't think I trust <laughs> anyone Anyone who's currently a governor in the United States. Yeah, definitely, definitely not about trust. Christy, no. All right. that's Moving different. on. <laughs> Next topic. Moving on. Bill Barr. Naughty or nice? <laughs> Attorney oh, General Bill Barr. Fuck him. Rico says, fuck that guy. We don't... I, I agree. Fuck that guy. He uh, a lot of talk. Nothing but a lot of talk and a badge. Did goddamn jack shit. Didn't prosecute anybody. Now he's out there just you know fucking around. So yeah, fuck Bill Barr in the ass. The only thing I know about Bill Barr is that Brian calls him Bob Barr. Barr. That's all I know. I always call him Bob Barr from the old was the old senator. Yeah, just like uh, like, libertarian Bob or Bill. Just like Mueller, he's a he's a deep state fixer. That's all he's always been. Yeah, Yeah, exactly right. And another. He's a black mark on Trump yet again. Yep. Because Trump is just maybe he had good thoughts every once in a while, but he just he he was too lazy to actually do any research into it. It's like he got everyone talked about Trump playing 4D chess. He got checkmated yep. every fucking step of everything he did because he was too lazy to actually look into anything. Anyone yep. with that brain would know Bob Barr is not the fucking guy to hire here. Trump didn't do any research. Or Bolton. It's Bill Barr. It's Bill Barr. How about Bolton? Yeah. <laughs> Bob Barr would be bad to hire too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Wasn't Donald he Trump, the libertarian I, candidate for president? Are we all unanimous in Donald Trump gets a naughty this year? I mean, I, I know he's he didn't shut down uh, that early, but overall, eh. Are you talking, I, we're he, talking he, about he, Trump now? Trump? Now we're talking about Donald Trump. I, are I we going to finish on... Um, Bill Barr? Or are we just gonna naughty? So we, anybody... I'm just gonna give him a naughty. But Trump. can I make yeah, my no, official he's vote? Naughty. naughty? All right. He's naughty. Yeah. Bill Bill Barr's naughty. I thought it's a national transition to talk about Donald Trump, and then I have like two more topics, and then what? we'll call it. Trump, Trump, Trump. naughty. No, you're not, Mark. Quit being a bitch. You're gonna get a naughty. Mark gets a naughty already. That's fine. For being a, for being a little bitch, Dick. I'll end this All right. podcast. Let's talk about Donald Trump. We're not I even in an hour yet. Edit. Fucking queef. All right, Donald Trump. There's the sound again of the underwater submarine being hammered upon. Nobody's by... moving. How, how's their? Where's the sound? It's from? Not from your moving. It's from your uh, stand, Odie. It's, it's from it's, your bike it's just stand. Emitting from my stand. Yes, you're moving. Yeah. Moving. There are Odie. Your there are. You're literally moving, moving, moving as you're saying you're not moving. or am watching listen, you move. There There's are nothing the hitting. Wind. Nothing hitting. Odie. There's no sound listen, coming. I'm there watching. Sound coming. I'm gonna hear your sound. You're on my way. Hear any sound? Hear any sound? Shut Shelby the fuck up. I'm going to kill you. There are springs on the side of your fucking stand that get rubbed with the smallest movement. Trust me. I went through this with this goddamn mic stand. Yeah, right. I used to do it all the time. Here we go. <laughs> Donald Trump. I will allow uh, Sleepyville fucking Mark Claire to talk about Donald Trump first. Naughty or nice on Donald Trump 2020, Mark. This is easy. I have a rule. If you are uh, in any way actively or passively supporting a genocide, you get a naughty. So Donald Trump, once again, gets a naughty. That's it. But I will be curious to see if he pardons anybody before the year that might give me a different uh, Actually, that's part of why I will give him a presumptive uh, or a preemptive naughty before the rest of you talk, because he pardoned 15 people today, many yep. of whom were swampy pieces of shit, none of whom were Edward Snowden or Julian Assange. and uh, or, or Ross even- Albrecht. Or Ross yeah. Ulbrich. Thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. These are libertarian so, fantasies. He pardoned a lot of fucking horse shit, a lot of fucking crony bullshit. He did pardon uh, Carter Page, which I guess is probably for the best. But Papadopoulos was, should have been pardoned. That was good. Oh, uh, no. He uh, he did pardon Papadopoulos. That was it. He pardoned Papadopoulos. Like Carter Page. But, Papa Page. Not, sorry, not Carter Page. I was confusing my Papadopoulos with my Carter Pages. Do so, you think he'll pardon Roger Stone? Yes, absolutely. Probably. Well, he may look, he may yet, maybe he'll get a nice and go on a pardoning spree, in which case I'll do it. He's not going to pardon pardon one deserving person. I agree. I don't think he will either. Will he pardon me? (laughs) For what? Farting. For (laughs) undisclosed crimes. (laughs) (laughs) Can you just Uh, tell like like anything how he's ever done? Pardon. It would be funny if he he pardoned Hunter Biden. He was like, Hunter Biden, you've done some terrible (laughs) things. uh, He should. should. 
doing all that uh, cocaine and smoking that crack, but I I'm going to let you off the hook. Age, let you the hook. <laughs> so everyone <laughs> talked about Trump, you know, for the first three years about how he was compromised by the Russians. Trump has been compromised by the deep state. They're clearly yep. holding shit over him or threatening him. Um, with, you know, once you get out of office, maybe we'll come after you or, you know, we'll look into these dealings or come after your family. He's like, eh, I don't want it. He's a selfish piece of shit. He's not going to threaten, do anything that threatens his freedom, financial security in any way. He's playing ball with them. And that's why he's not going to pardon anyone. That's not why he, that's why he's not doing anything of actual fucking substance, but talk. So yeah. that's what you're going to see for the last month of Trump. Just him covering his own ass. So you give him a naughty. He's a naughty. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll give Trump a naughty simply for the fact that he cannot hire a good campaign manager. He hired that lunatic who there was that video of him getting drunk and freaking lunching at police officers. And apparently he'd beat up his wife before that, that Greg Paschal or whatever his name is, uh, that guy and missed the easiest path to uh, beating Joe Biden all he had to do, even after Trump did the 15 days to flatten the curve and lockdown, when we didn't know shit about this virus, he could have pivoted and went hardcore against the lockdowns. Instead, he kind of went wishy-washy. He could have gone hardcore, you know, saying that th- these uh, these governors, these uh, blue blue state governors are destroying their states. He kind of did, but he kind of didn't. And he kind of applied to tried to play both sides of it. And that, that's why he lost. That's why he lost the election, because he wouldn't go all in. Yeah. Well, I still think he lost the election because of massive fucking irregularities in the system. Also but, agree. Well, <laughs> prob- also agree. probably true. But if you yep. listen to uh, you know Chris Spangle, he'll tell you this was the most secure election in <laughs> history. So. Don't worry, he's coming up. You don't want to log up before we talk about Chris Spangle, Mark. What is he basing um, that on? Nothing. That's what. Fucking nothing. No, he, he just a whole ninety-minute breakdown of it. I'm not no, saying I, I agree won't with be it, listening. Anyone have a question about it? Because did, anyway. he, did he do a forensic analysis of the Dominion voting machines? <laughs> did he audit the signatures? I doubt it. So shut up. Did you guys All know right. Joe Biden won only 16% of the counties in the United States? Yes. Less than that, I thought. Lowest it's percentage insane. of counties won. Previous low was Obama with 22%. Which is crazy. Yeah, I, I did, did not know it was that low. It's insane. We're not getting off on an election tangent here. All right. Donald Trump. Oh, no, so by the way, a Facebook user said, I thought uh, Trump pardoned that Roger Stone months ago. No, he did not. He commuted his sentence. So basically he lowered it to, I guess, lesser charges, but he was not uh, officially pardoned. Yeah. All right. So I, also, I say Donald Trump uh, gets a naughty from me for sure. Tomorrow, for the same reason Mark said, also the reasons that I expressed. Uh, gentlemen, can I, uh, thumbs up. Can I say damage. one more thing real quick about Trump is, sure. you know, wh- right after the election, I thought, oh yeah, Trump's going to be here in, in uh, four years. He's going to run again. He's going to have a lot of support. I think not. I think in four years, people are like, man, that was a fucking, just so much bullshit during that four years, regardless of the state of the economy, Regardless of what, what Biden does, you know, people are just be like, I don't want to go through that shit another four we, years. We might have a whole lot of bullshit these next four years. Well, I'm sure we will, but people, maybe they'll vote for a Republican. They're just not going to be like, I don't want to hear all this bullshit about Trump again, all his fucking wars and petty arguments with every person under the sun. I think he should just go start his news organization, be on reality, and, and that'll be that. So you give him a naughty or nice? I gave him a naughty at the start of the show. You gave him like three naughties already. He's naughty then. Excellent. Moving on. Next topic. You you evoke the name of Chris Spangle. Let's let's evaluate. Chris Spangle. Naughty or nice in 2020. I'm gonna take the Ronald. I feel like you should start. I'm gonna take the Ronald Reagan stance of thou shalt not speak ill of fellow libertarian <laughs> podcasters or that's not true though fellow league of liberty members remember the league of liberty guys no remember the good old days? about it What's yeah that? well the league of liberty doom still exists and we'll be well, returning Spangle in January is the last cool. league of liberty member that still does his podcast and he gets my respect for it i have a very different outlook than chris he's going to be interviewing me on his uh, podcast very soon uh Would you say but, that um, you and chris Spangle are a viral uh contagion that destroys podcasts no i wouldn't say that i birthed this podcast and i can end it tomorrow <laughs> if i want <laughs> ah, listen to the new Brian McWilliams is Liberty's best hope. 
after Mark kills the Lions Liberty podcast starting up on January 1st on a new network. Um, all right. So what's on your the weird on- libertarians on- network, ironically? <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing. It's called negging. <laughs> all right, Mark, what's your grade of Chris Spank? I don't think I would be afraid to say that I think Chris has a very more blue pilled, although I think he pretty much rejects that whole uh, idea or the idea of the cathedral. We can go into that all, all day long. What? He, and Chris, Chris did post a uh, a meme from Angela McCardle from like a year and a half ago where she was doing uh, like what, like Nazi uh, Mad Libs or something being silly. And he posted That's it. That's what inspired me to bring him on. This, being very him much on. upset by it. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even know if he's trolling me, Mises Caucus types or not. Uh, I don't know what his deal is with that stuff. As an overall, you know, libertarian podcaster, I give him a nice as a as a body of work as a person. But I don't agree with like anything he's been saying in the last few months about anything. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Howie, what about you? <sighs> uh, Is he a libertarian? You know, Howie? you know, I was I was gonna I was gonna give him a nice because you know we did the show with him and he was very cordial and you know he was you know much better than his co-host. But hearing about this Angela stuff, I have to give him a naughty. That's bullshit, man. <laughs> All right. Naughty from Howie. Did Rico has left the uh, – No, I just the- heard about it right now. Yeah. I'm going to give him a, a naughty just for – I haven't heard one podcast he's on. I, he did some moderation. <laughs> of, okay. um, what did he – he came on and moderated was, the drinking was, episode, right? I yeah, he oh, was great. Right. And, he was, and he did a great job. He was a good sport on yeah, that. How episode. long ago was that? I forget. It's like last month. No. It was only like no, it's only like three or four months ago. Yeah, that was over the. But that was, yeah, anyone who claims this is the most secure election in in our history, that's absurd. Um, uh, especially since Solar Winds or Ryan has been hacked, which was on all the voting machines. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, like that's like just nine months ago. The person that you wanted <laughs> to win won. So it's like whenever. Um, you know, the football team wins and you're on like the message boards and people are like, oh, shut up about that holding call. It didn't affect the game, blah, blah, blah. It's, just, <laughs> it's like anti-sour grapes because your candidate won, so you just dismiss everything. But I mean, right. clearly a lot of bullshit happened. To to act like it didn't, that's that's ridiculous and it's insulting too. So right. I don't know if right. it changed the outcome of the election. I suspect it did. There were more votes than registered voters. Yeah, so naughty for that yep. claim. That's absurd. All right, Odie, naughty or nice? Chris Spangle, and I, that's not me doing that. I'm not even moving. That's it ridiculous. is you doing no, it. it's not. It's not. It's not. I was literally like frozen. Anyway, it's Mark. It's definitely coming from Mark. Uh, it's Chris Spangle sabotaging our podcast. But <laughs> I mean, just to be, I mean, to be truthful, I have a lot of respect. Dark for Tom Woods, if anything. Probably. Mm, DTM. Uh, a lot of respect for Chris Spangle and like to go back to what Mark said, like some of the stuff he posts, it's like, what, what are you trying to do here? What are you trying to accomplish? He's great at just getting attention and getting, you know, it, maybe it's persuasion moves. I don't know, but he, he's definitely kind of raised his, uh, you know, his level of influence and up. Everyone know in, in libertarian, uh, movement or whatever the hell it is knows who Chris Spangle is. So he's done a great job at that. So oh, I'll no, give him a no, nice no, for no, that. Good for his own brand, but you know, like Mark said, recently I don't agree with really anything he says. So <laughs> I, I got to give him a naughty for that. I, I echo that as well. I do. I love Chris as a person. I like hanging out with him, and uh, and I consider him a friend of the show. And I'm sure we'll be friends after this. That's one of the beautiful things, though, is I know we can all we can unanimously give Chris a a naughty here, and I'm also giving him a naughty because he's I didn't been give a, him a naughty. Well, whatever. I Too bad. It's going to be fair. We need it's to. It's going to get consensus naughty on the fucking Twitter that I'm going to put out. Maybe to be so... fair, we, we need to naughty your nice o- ourselves. Well, well we bet. could do that. At the end. You know, what would be really funny is if someone what? wanted to go through the archives of the show and see, because I think we did Kim Jong Un one year and see. <laughs> we did four thumbs down and one thumbs up. Which is Kim Jong Un got four thumbs up in 2018. <laughs> Anyway, I also give Chris Spangle a naughty, even though, but I, again, I, the, the beautiful thing is about Spangle and also us and also Dave, you know, they, we have that, Marco said a good debate between Spangle and Dave Smith. It was entertaining. I and, did never did that, so you made oh, that up. 
Wait, I th- oh, wait, when, when did they yeah. talk? What show did they yeah, talk? Yeah, I know, Brian. You're living in they Brian did world. it on Dave's show. Okay. Mark recommended Oh, the, oh that's right. He had him on Dave's show. Well, it's hard to remember who's been on the lines of Liberty Octagon because now that's the place to be. I'm sure now in, 20, in late 2020, they would have been on the lines of Liberty Octagon talking, clearly. But regardless, it doesn't matter. We're going to give him a naughty. Shame on you, Spangle. But we'll still be friends in the morning, so it's all good. Um, all right, moving on. Two more. We're not going to do Rand Paul. Rand, Randall, Randall get a nice. So I'm not going to bother. Day. I'm not going to bother. Um, uh, we're going to talk about the American population. Not your nice. Oh, that's so easy. I thought you were going to bring up Bill Cosby for some reason. By the way, it's definitely Brian making the noise. I've, yeah, I'm agreeing. I've narrowed it down. It's Brian moving the most, and it's... I do an entire fucking solo podcast with this exact setup, idiots, for an hour I, I, every week. If it was before, me, you would fucking hear it. Before I started swinging my cord just to make the sound to like annoy you, and it didn't even make a sound. Watch this. No, it's not me. You hear that sound? Yes. Yeah, you know, yes. Yes, we hear that. We hear that sound, yeah. I'm hitting my desk right now, so you hear that sound. It's not the same fucking sound. It's Odie... This is, I'm swinging my cord around. I'm no, swinging my no, cord. No, 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 that is making a noise, hear? Howie. There, we heard that. That's me tapping my mic. Yeah, everybody can make a sound if they tap their mic. We know that. It's just me moving. moving. You're right. All right. right let's, let's, let's Tune into the bonus show. Like, I don't feel like editing this, so fucking knock it the fuck off. The American population. John Odermatt. Naughty. You kidding me? You got people out there tattletailing on their neighbors, freaking people in Costco's or Sam's Clubs or whatever, dumping buckets of water on people who aren't wearing masks. It's, it's, it's insanity. What? Is that happening? I saw a video that, of that. Yeah. Video, yeah. It's, it's it wasn't it's a, like, water it's it was a water challenge. Not to mention the Americans burning down the cities and looting and destroying businesses and fucking. Yep. There's that too. <laughs> That's I, I, had Black, That's I, I had Black Lives Matter on here, but it was too too much of a slam dunk. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to skip over that. That's why I was bring, bringing. This I up. am skipping over them. It's too, it's a fucking slam dunk naughty. They're right, naughty. Right. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I agree. Same with the American people. Fuck American people. Hundred percent naughty. All of them. Can't stand. I mean, them. All of there you. are certainly. I don't like to collectivize too much. I'm sure there are many, many people who American people who are kicking ass and and not being total psychos about it. But I certainly don't know them because I live here in L.A. And uh, yeah, everyone, su- everyone, everyone sucks. Everyone's yeah. looking to the state for a solution, one way or the other. If we even can believe the the Biden and the and the Trump totals, I mean, that whole population, as far as I'm concerned, everybody in that total is is lost. Rico, any thoughts? Um, so I was saw an analogy where it was on Reddit. It was like I think it's Rico one- making the goddamn noise. <laughs> It's Rico. It's been Rico the whole time. That would make the most sense. Where's the noise? I hear it right now, and I'm sitting in a chair, not touching anything. I think it would be making Don't more re- noise. <laughs> anyway, like that movement with your hand. So <laughs> there enjoy was, the pride. Uh, you can see Rico uh, gesturing wildly, like a like a handicapped child fighting a bee. So there's the black ants and the red ants are trapped in a jar. And they go to war with each other eventually because they think they're the each other is the enemy. When in actuality, neither of the ants realizes it's the it's the person who put the, them in the jar that's the enemy. But I disagree with the analogy. I think if the red ants are the left and the black ants are the right, the black ants are mad at the red ants not because they think they're the enemy, but because they refuse to acknowledge the enemy is the fucking person that put them in the jar. The black ants realize the government has put us in the fucking jar and the red ants are fine with it. And the black ants are pissed off at the red ants. That's where the division is. The red ants don't fucking understand how bad the government is. And the black ants might be dumb asses too, but at least they can see who the true fucking enemy is. It's not the, the, red, left. Ants, the red ants think you just need the right person putting them in the jar. Exactly. <laughs> That's the right red ant right, shaking it. So, yes. <laughs> I like it. So naughty. Yeah, naughty. naughty, I agree. Naughty. It was a, I was a slam dunk, but I had to bring it up. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'll throw one quick one in here. Maurice, again, Maurice watching our live stream. She gets Maurice. a lot of the comments. Maurice, nice. naughty or nice? Naughty. <laughs> naughty. Nice for giving us money. <laughs> Maurice, he says, Chaz Chop. What uh, do you guys think? Chaz Chop. Uh, you know, uh, libertarians were, 
we're defending it. So let's get into Chaz Chop real quick. And then I have one more, which will be which, which will be kind of funny to wrap it up. What the fuck is this? One more every fucking time. This and we're only an hour and 16 team. minutes in. To the, it's the Christmas episode, Rico. Ryan's gesturing his hands loudly, and then the noise came. Huh. No. Weird. It just did. Just did. Listen to the tape. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> no, listen to the tape. You didn't. Nothing's moving. All right. Chaz Chop, who wants to start? Well, Rico. They're go. infringing on other people's... Uh, they're not... I can see the sentimentality towards it being a libertarian because they're like rejecting the state, except they're fucking over other people's private property in the process. So I don't really see how that's a fair, um, you know, well, you analysis. Say, I guess I did, yeah, agreed. But could you argue this? And I'm playing devil's advocate here. Could you argue that for any free society in our current state of existence, for a free society to exist, to uh, be separate from government, do you have to infringe on other people's private property in order to establish that free state or not? Hmm. Maybe. That's my answer. It's All right. a, a, irrelevant. They're a bunch of socialist assholes. They <laughs> fucking some nonsense. Well, I would say that you have to you would have to buy them out. And uh, granted, the people that were occupying Chaz Chop clearly had no fucking money. Otherwise, they wouldn't be out there all day long being jackasses. Not and, only and that, planning, they were not. Uh, the they were quite authoritarian in their own right. From the stories that I read from people that weren't CNN reporters, you go in there. There's you know armed militias watching your every move to make sure that you basically. Um, complied with their edicts of the zone. It wasn't an autonomous zone like where you could act freely. It was you could uh, act under our authoritarian rules as opposed to the authoritarian rules of some other government. So it just re- basically was a warlord in um, a former city of the United States. I don't really under- see where it got better. Yep. Anybody else I, will give them, I will give them credit for at least having some balls and uh, making a move, uh, throwing a haymaker, if you will. Um, I don't really agree with the way they did it, but at least they did something. I would prefer maybe if, uh, you know, if you want to do a similar thing, maybe buy some land to do it on your own property or move to Panama and uh, join Ocean Builders. You can learn more about that by going to lionsofliberty.com slash ocean. And uh, you can get on the uh, the cruise ship sitting out there in Panama. Maybe buy one of the uh, the sea pods and live a free life there. Hey, uh, can we good. buy like a Royal Caribbean cruise ship at this point? I mean, they got to be going for pennies on the dollar. Well, that's what they did in Panama. Yeah, right? they we bought that's what I can we do that? I, honestly, Rico, I still think it's a lot better idea. Our original plan of letting Tom Woods buy a cruise ship and then just taking it over. I still think that's our best way forward, if I'm being perfectly honest. All right. Would it be a little Yeah. All right. Naughty. All right. I say naughty, Chaz Chop. Those lists always get naughty to me. So, yeah. Naughty, 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 naughty. All right. And the last one to wrap this all up. Uh, Somebody wants to get a degenerate gambler's naughty or nice as well. No. Howie is on this fucking show. He's not allowed to be on degenerate gamblers. Thus, anything degenerate gamblers related is not going to happen. That's the loss. Degenerate Campus, by the way, is one that of our phone Joe shows. Joe Kub- Kubinski. Oh, there. okay. Hmm. Well, sorry, Joe. No, you can't get a Degenerate Campus not your nice because Howie's on here and Howie's been banned from that podcast. All mean, right. Last, last topic to round up this holiday naughty or nice. Rob Schneider. Excuse? Oh, I thought you were. Rob, Rob Schneider, naughty or nice. <laughs> I'll go first. I, I, nice. I got no problem with the way he's handled his business. <laughs> Fuck you, <Yeah>. Odie. <laughs> nice I, for me. Yeah, for two reasons. Nice because he's a celebrity who has been tweeting about Mises and retweeting Tom, Tom, Tom Wood speeches, and that's to be nice. And second, if it makes Brian angry, it's obviously a nice thing. So nice for, for two nice. Yeah. I give him a double nice, actually. Pedophiles make me angry. When Mark. is he coming on, by the way? You a pedophile fan? You a fan, fan of pedophilia? After the where's, the, where's this coming from? Twenty twenty-four. We'll see. Uh, uh, Rob right. Schneider gets a nice from me too. Lovely, Rico. Ah, a nice. He's still coming on your show, right? When's he coming on? Next week. You can uh, do it. 
we'll see. I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> sometime in January. Now you're going to act bigger than it. I see. You guys remember we saw I, a, I, I am now. You, you, already, you already fucked me over once. I'm not going to promise. I'm not going to. I already promised he's going to come I, on and then he fucked me in the ass. I'm not going to promise it again, but he said I'm he's very gonna sweating about it. Yeah. Well, when he sees that the majority of the lines gave him a nice when you tweet this out. Maybe <laughs> when he sees everyone but the guy it. interviewing gives, gives him a nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get him on. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to have him on. No, I'll, I will actually punch I'm going to reach face. out. He won't even uh, know we're from the same thing. Right in the fucking face. <laughs> Let's see who gets him on first. Knock your goddamn fucking gay Thor main right off your head. <laughs> All right. Right. Anyway, I also, by the way, shockingly, we're going to give Rob Schneider a nice because he has adopted the principles of libertarianism. And uh, has been tweeting out Mises. And, and look, man, you, it's rare to get a celebrity that is actually willing to put his name to uh, to libertarian thought in Austrian economics. So he still gets a nice, even though he fucked me in the ass. It's like when Santa dr- brings you a gift you didn't like. He brought me a gift of fucking me over and going on Tom Woods' show first. But he's still Santa Claus for libertarianism. As I far can't as- wait till he comes on your show and after five minutes of hearing your microphone rattling, he hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my microphone, you dumb fuck. <laughs> we'll see when Rob Schneider comes on. Yeah, but we will see. Yeah, well, All we'll right, see. We've we done other shows. Yeah, let's end on microphone talk. Listen to our new podcast, Microphone Talk, with Rico being a cunt. Mary- right after what's that noise? Mary fucking references animals Jeez. from me from Until John. Live long. That's not what we do on this show. Okay. Always stay plugged in delivery. Yeah. Livery? Naughty for you, fucking dickheads.